Do we have a natural hunting instinct? The adaptation of hominids from scavenger gatherers to hunter gatherers has had numerous ramifications, not just for the hominids themselves, but also for present day mo fully modern humans. Some of the effects of the hunting adaptation for early hominids involved moving to the top of the food chain, aiding group cohesion, the development of technology and the possible origin of religion. The effects on present day fully modern humans include possibly the existence of religion, the current level of weaponry and general technology, and most importantly, the possibility that humans as a species may not have existed without the hunting adaptation. It would be erroneous to assume that humans have a natural hunting instinct rather than recognising the adaptation as practical and culturally based, not specifically biological. The hunting adaptation is believed to date back no earlier than Homo erectus, with all earlier hominids relying on scavenger gatherer methods of subsistence and a large amount of that reliance was on gathering rather than hunting. This earlier method of subsistence meant that early hominids, such as Homo habilis, were further down the food chain. This lower position meant the early hominids had to make do with what meat they could find or procure, which in turn means consuming the less desirable portions of meat, containing less nutritional value than the best portions. The move of Homo erectus to the top of the food chain gave other advantages besides freedom of choice over meat cuts. It also meant early humans could dominate their landscape and adapt to whichever environment was needed. For example, the majority of subsistence in cold climates such as Siberia, where it is extremely difficult or totally impossible to gather enough plant food to sustain a group, is hunting based. Successful hunting also requires a certain level of intelligence and group cohesion. The amount of solid group work needed to scavenge compared to the level of group work needed to hunt successfully is two very different things. According to Gross, hunting requires knowledge, strength, skill, sharp senses and great patience. The level of weaponry is also different when applied to hunting. Scavenging requires only weapons sufficient to cut meat into easily and quickly transportable sizes. The weapons do not need to kill the animal as it is already dead. For hunting, however, the weapons need to be able to kill efficiently and consistently and yet still be easily transportable. An example of this type of weapon is a spear. The spear is a permanent, portable weapon of more sophistication than previous inventions, such as the older one technology. However, as Shepard interestingly points out, there was not a single tool of the Pleistocene apparently made for war meaning all technology was focused on the hunt. Another interesting cultural development of the hunting adaptation is the emergence of religion. Hunter-gatherer religion is closely linked to the big game animals being hunted. That is, all the religious symbols and pictures are mainly of large prey. These paintings started appearing in the Upper Paleolithic period and portray large game almost exclusively with very little to nothing being shown of plant material. It can be inferred that these paintings were not merely graffiti due to their positions in generally hard to reach caves and a lack of food remains, meaning the artists did not eat during the betrayal. As Feta points out, carnivores were positioned in the most inaccessible parts of the cave and herbivores were in the more accessible areas, giving a sense that the more ferocious and harder to hunt, the more important the animal. There may be numerous reasons for inferring importance on hunted animals, and one such reason may be the belief that the hunted animals had a special life force that can be tapped into by depicting the animal in a permanent medium, such as cave paintings. Tapping into this life force may make the hunters feel as though either the hunter and hunted shared a spiritual bond, or that there is more likelihood of a successful hunt. Since there is nutritional necessity for a certain amount of meat in the hunter-gatherer's diet, the diification of food animals may be a natural transfer of survival emotion onto an important entity. This transfer may make the hunters feel more capable and grounded in their environment, more connected to the very things they rely on for survival. As mentioned before, it would be erroneous to assume that the hunting adaptation was a natural human instinct. If this were the case, humans would not have begun with scavenging and would have been hunting from the very beginning. As Gross points out, for hunting to be a natural instinct, early hominids and humans would have been primarily hunters and not gatherers and scavengers as was the case. 
There is an obvious importance on hunting as a cultural adaptation to the eventual evolution of Homo sapiens, but that is all it is, a cultural adaptation, not a natural instinct. In conclusion, it is possible to wonder, had Homo erectus not moved from scavenging to large game hunting, would this early human ancestor have been able to move into and survive quite well in such extreme climates? It also placed humans at the top of the food chain, which in present day terms means humans continue to dominate the environment, an event that would most likely not have been possible without the hunting adaptation. It is also interesting to note that, as was noted earlier, all weapons were made purely for use in hunting and not for war. This could possibly mean that had hunting not entered the cultural arena of humans and early hominids, weapons per se may never have existed. The same may be said for religion, although this is not as clear an issue. While it has been noted that religion and hunting seem to have arisen around the same period, with game animals being depicted in reverential settings, it is not known whether religion would have arrived anyway based on some other necessity, with something other than animals being deified. What is entirely definite is the realisation that hunting is not a natural instinct but a cultural adaptation.